Good evening. On behalf of the Jefferson County Growth Association and Jefferson College, welcome to our first of two legislative forums. My name is Dr. Ray Comiskey, president of Jefferson College and moderator for tonight's event. I'm pleased to see so many folks in our hall tonight. We are coming to you from the beautiful campus of Jefferson College, and in addition to our live audience, uh, you can hear us over KJF Radio uh, or over their associated web resources, myinfo.com, uh, mymoinfo.com, TuneIn Radio, or their iHeart Radio app, or watch us on JCTV, or uh, which is Charter Cable Channel 989, or our social media channels including Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. Before we begin our program, I'd like to take a moment and thank, first of all, the folks behind the scenes who have made this event possible. Of course, I want to thank the Jefferson County Growth Association Board, uh, my assistant at the college, Lisa Vineyard, the staff at JCTV and KJF Radio, and finally, you, our audience, who are either here in person or taking the time to watch or listen to this broadcast and learn a little more about our uh, political environment. So thank you very much. Of course, we wouldn't be able to do this without the financial support of some of the great organizations around Jefferson County, and I would like to recognize our sponsors for this evening. Our gold member sponsor is Dobbs Tire and Auto. Our silver sponsors are Govero Land Services and Comtree, and our forum sponsors tonight are Enterprise Bank, Fireworks City, and Lane Consolidated Services. Also, before we get, begin, I want to take a moment to address the candidates. First of all, I want to thank you for participating tonight. Uh, it's important that, uh, that we hear your voice. And second of all, we want to thank you for putting yourself out there uh, to better Jefferson County, the state of Missouri, and the United States. So if you wouldn't mind indulging me, let's give our candidates a round of applause. The Jefferson County Growth Association is a broad community of citizens and business leaders throughout the county united in an effort to support the financial stability and economic prosperity of Jefferson County. Our mission is to provide coordination of professional leadership to promote and support new and existing business and growth throughout Jefferson County. JCGA recognizes that our democracy depends upon an informed and engaged citizenry to participate in our democratic process. While JCGA does not directly endorse any specific candidate or parties, the organization does su uh, support the legislative process through public events such as these candidate forums. Our purpose here tonight is to provide an opportunity to hear Democrat and Republican candidates address issues facing the citizens of Jefferson County. Our format tonight, uh, we are largely focusing on county offices. Next week we will focus on candidates for state and federal offices. Candidates will have five minutes each to explain who they are and what they would do if elected. If a candidate is represented by a representative, that individual will be given up to three minutes to speak. While no questions will be taken during tonight's event, candidates are encouraged to stay after the forum to talk with audience members. The order of offices was predetermined and a coin flip to see which party goes first. The order is then alternated uh, back and forth throughout the night. We ask each candidate to respect the time limit. Uh, we have a timekeeper who will give you a three, two, one minute or a 30 second warning, plus the dreaded stop card if necessary. So let's begin. Our first um, office tonight is that of county executive. Our first candidate tonight is the Republican candidate, Dennis Gannon. Mr. Gannon was elected to the Jefferson College Board of Trustees in 1991, serving for two terms or 12 years. While on the board, Mr. Gannon served as board president from 1999 to 2001. He's been involved with his family's privately owned businesses, which has included multiple types of business and commercial real estate projects throughout Jefferson County. As well, Mr. Gannon is the co-owner of commercial real estate uh, Gannon Plaza and Festus and is affiliated with the Gannon family hotel operations. He has served both in the U.S. Army and the Naval Reserves and the Missouri Army National Guard. Mr. Gannon serves or has served on the following boards, the, Jefferson, uh, excuse me, the Mercy Hospital Jefferson Board of Directors, the Mercy Hospital East Community Board of Directors, St. Louis, the Jefferson County Port Authority, and the DeSoto School District uh, Board of Education. So without further ado, please welcome Dennis Gannon. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> I might be sharing with a little bit with you that Dr. Kaminsky's already shared, so just indulge me a little bit if it's a repeat. 
I want to thank Dr. Kaminsky and Jefferson College and the Jefferson County Growth Association for hosting this event this evening. I am Dennis Gann and I live in DeSoto with my wife Elaine of 42 years and Elaine I'd like to wave your hand please. <laughs> <laughs> and we're members of First Baptist Church of DeSoto. I, as uh, Dr. Kaminsky mentioned, I am retired from U.S. Army Reserve after serving 20 years. I have been, have been employed by Gannon's, a privately owned family business, for many years. Our business has included retail, hotels, and commercial real estate development in DeSoto, Festus, and Peebley. After 38 years in the hotel business, I retired from full-time employment, and during most of those years, I served as the primary executive on site with responsibility for all business operations. My lifetime work has not been as a politician, but as a working businessman providing for my family in Jefferson County. I have been responsible for hiring, paying, and have worked directly with coworkers for over 40 years. Other than my service in the military, I have never earned income outside of Jefferson County. Over the years, I have been an observer of our county government's workings from the outside and recently have been dis disappointed with our county government's effectiveness. As a county, we are ready for change and I, am believe I am, and I believe I am the right person now to make positive changes in our county. My community involvement has been, excuse me, that's a little intimidating right there in your face. <laughs> My community involvement has been extensive and quite long. I have already presented to you that I, I've already represented you as a trustee of Jefferson College when I was elected years ago. I also serve on Mercy Hospital Board of Directors and just recently was appointed to Mercy Hospital East Community Board of Directors in St. Louis. I have served on the Port Authority and as president and continue to remain involved in our port and watch the exciting developments that are coming to our port. In 1974, in this very room, I was enrolled in an American government class. Our professor used case studies to teach us how government worked in our lives to help us or hinder us. His primary citizen was Pistol Pete Packer from Peckerwood, Alabama. <laughs> the professor's case studies also always use the recent actions of the city council, or in our case, the county council, and how it affected Pete. As I have gained wisdom and experience over the years, I see more clearly what me Pete must have thought. What I have learned, as a county government, we must lead in working with our unincorporated areas and, and municipalities to serve our citizens and develop conditions to make their lives better. We must be responsible to safeguard the money we collect from our residents and use it wisely to improve life in Jefferson County. We must be engaged in public safety, which includes our, problem, our problems with drugs, war on crime, and we must be involved in making sure our schools are safe for our children and grandchildren. We must honor, support, and show our respect to our first responders who risk their lives with every breath to, take, with every breath to, take, to ensure our, our safety and always be thankful to our veterans for their service to our country. For our corporate citizens, we must grow our economy. We must, we must balance good governance in a manner that is fair and beneficial to both resident citizens and corporate citizens. And it is imperative that we must discontinue the mindset of us versus them. We, we must operate with a sense of urgency in the manner we do business with our corporate citizens because time is money and we must make sure we do not unreasonably impede their progress. We must reach out and become a regional thinker and work to become good neighbors. We are sitting at a trifecta of economic superhighway in Jefferson County. Jefferson County has the Mississippi River, major highway sources, as well as two railroads running right through our county. With good experienced leadership, our county can become the hub to create an ec economic powerhouse. We must offer fair and transparent leadership from our county that encourage investors to locate within the county. It is important that return tr we return trust back to our county government. Our resident citizens and our corporate citizens must trust all of the elected officials to put petty disagreements and personal agendas behind them. I can be the leader of leaders and the, the leader of leaders in the county and work towards this goal. My vision is simple and straightforward. 
I have years of leadership experience working in our family business and serving on the boards of Jefferson College, of Jefferson County largest agencies. I have the collaborative leadership to lead our county and workforce ready on day one. I have always worked to develop character, lead with integrity, and build trust. I do not plan to ruin it now. And I, Lisa, how far? I haven't seen it. Are we there? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. I, I didn't see it very well. All right, the Democrat for County Executive is Mr. Jeff Rorda. Mr. Rorda was elected as Missouri State Representative, serving in 2005 to 2011, and again from 2013 to 15. While in office, he served as a House Minority Whip for two years. Mr. Rorda is employed by the Fraternal Order of Police and is a nationally recognized police spokesman and union leader who has appeared on national TV well over 100 times. He previously worked for the St. Louis Police Officers Association and as a police officer for 17 years. Mr. Rorda's book, The War on Police, was released to critical acclaim in November 2015. Mr. Rorda volunteers his time serving on local fire and ambulance district boards, uh, as well as a lot of other interests. So please welcome Mr. Jeff Rorda. Thanks, Doc. I'll go off script for a moment and mention that I also had my American government class right here in this very room. Um, <laughs> But that was 1985. I don't, I don't mean to call Dennis old. Uh, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, good evening. I'm Jeff Rorda. I'm running for county executive. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to the Jefferson County Growth Association, to Jefferson College, uh, to KJFF, and to JCTV for making this forum possible. I appreciate the opportunity to remind voters of who I am and what it is I stand for. It's an opportunity to distinguish myself from my opponent. The distinctions couldn't be more clear. We all know how chaotic and dysfunctional our county government is. I hear about it from voters every single day. If you want change, I'm your candidate. If you want more of the same, you should vote for my opponent. The biggest distinction is my passion for service, though. I've devoted my entire adult life to the service of our community. At 15 years old, I started with our local fire department and volunteered there for the next 13 years. I served on the uh, fire board and the ambulance board. I worked in law enforcement for 17 years, starting as a 911 dispatcher and working my way all the way up to the position of chief of police. During that time, I worked undercover in some of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Jefferson County. And I put hundreds of despicable drug dealers behind bars. I passionately represented Jefferson County for eight years in the Missouri legislature. But what I'm most proud of is taking the national stage in the wake of the hands up, don't shoot myth in Ferguson and setting the record straight on behalf of the unionized police officers I represent as they were attacked both figuratively and literally for defending our safety. I have a record standing up for what's right that I'm very proud of, a record that sets me apart as a candidate. Whether it's unearthing corruption in local government as a police officer, fighting to balance our state budget and to cut red tape as a state representative, or standing up for law enforcement in the aftermath of Ferguson and other high-profile shootings, I do what I think is right even when it's not easy. And I always stand up for the little guy and for those who make our community safer. That's why I'm endorsed by police, firefighters, and a number of labor unions. I have a proven track record of rolling up my sleeves to get things done and putting partisan disagreements aside by working across the aisle. In eight years in the Missouri House, no other lawmaker in the minority party passed more legislation than I did. That's because I advanced common sense laws that made our community a better, safer, more prosperous place to live. I drew on my experience as a cop and an undercover narcotics detective and passed laws that cracked down on the drug dealers poisoning our children with opioids and other drugs. I increased sentences for child molesters who victimized the weak. I led the charge in the Missouri Manufacturers Job Act that has produced tens of thousands of jobs here in Jefferson County and all across our state. And I fought to stop right to work and filed legislation to raise the minimum wage, pro-worker legislation my opponent is against. Let me bring the same passion, experience, and work ethic to Jefferson County government. Our county government isn't working for the people. Let's work together to change that. 
I promise you, if elected, I won't rest until our broken county government is fixed, until we stamp out the opioid epidemic, until we make our deadly roads safer, until we bring jobs and opportunities to our community, until we create a professional county government that works for the betterment of the people. This is personal for me. Like you, I call Jefferson County my home. I was raised here in a blue collar family. My wife and I started a successful small business here and raised our three daughters with those same Jefferson County values. I want to make this a better place for my family and for your family. My name is Jeff Rorda and I'm asking you for your vote for County Executive on November 6th. Please allow me the honor to serve you one more time. Thank you. All right, now we move to the county council races, and we will begin with District 1. And we have one uh, candidate with us tonight, and that's the Republican candidate, Brian Haskins. Mr. Haskins has been elected to the Northwest R1 School District Board of Education from 2009 to 2012, and the High Ridge Fire Protection uh, District Board from 2009 to 2015. A resident of High Ridge, Mr. Haskins owns and operates a self-storage business in High Ridge. Mr. Haskins volunteers his time with, with uh, community organizations such as the Jefferson County Economic Development Corporation, the Jefferson County Parks uh, Foundation, past president, and the Northwest Chamber of Commerce 2002 to the present, uh, the High Ridge Rotary Club, and the Missouri Self Storage Association 2008 to, to the present. So please welcome Brian Haskins. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, um, I think we all are in a very envious position of our friend here. I only heard that he's just got a honeydew list and nothing more come retirement. <laughs> so we wish you the best and a great job here. Yes, I'm, I'm Brian Haskins and I'm the, I'm the councilman elect for District 1. And I must say to thank people in the college and, and, and our growth association, I also should thank um, Cobb Constance. Uh, it took a lot of courage, not only to sign up, but it took a lot of courage, Cobb, at one of the labor meetings to look at the situation and then he decided that, that it was best for him, his family, to, to withdraw. Uh, I know the family, I, his, his parents are, were amazing um, and he's a great guy. And part of that, I thought, was an opportunity for me to get started even earlier. For instance, last night was my first town hall meeting. I was very nervous. There was a lot of upset people that lived in that far end of our county for the McBride subdivision at 109 and T, where there's about 500 homes going in. Traffic is, is unbelievable. Um, and I was there three days on the road uh, uh, greeting some of those folks that were very upset. But it went very well. They had uh, a lot of folks there. But I had MoDOT and uh, uh, the Sheriff's Department, and they, they fielded all the questions um, from time response to safety to, and, and if anybody's ever seen Junie Wagner from MoDOT give a presentation, she is, as Jim would tell you, she's unbelievable. So luckily for me, she had so much knowledge, the 30 questions they had for me, well, it was at the end of the night, and the sheriff said, oh, that is a county question for Brian. And I said, you know, this is time to really close this meeting. <laughs> I got out. <laughs> so I did get, it does make, give me a chance to get started. And I do look forward to, to uh, if all of them go that well, it's not so bad. Uh, they just really wanted to hear and ha they wanted somebody that helped them with some of their concerns and problems. And, and the Sheriff's Department and Judy had uh, amazing responses. Um, and it is an honor to be here. And, it, and it's an honor to be supported by so many, by everybody from our Labor's Club, the Labor's Union, um, from, the, from our paper, the leader. And what I promised to is I'd bring a strong leadership to transparency to our voters. And I thought that was, uh, a really a commitment that when I was on a school board and a fire board, I wanted to bring that same energy to our, our county government. Uh, when I came to the school board in Northwest, 
uh, some of that same playground equipment was there from the 60s, I believe. So we immediately changed all the playgrounds, brought them all up to code, and we did it in a very short time. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of urgency I feel that I'll be bringing to this county council. And I believe that we need to look at things that will drive this economic development machine that we have waiting here. Uh, we're looking for good employment, especially high quality jobs, union jobs. And these are all important for the growth of our county. Uh, having good parks, schools, roads that'll drive the growth will increase demand for our housing. It'll host tourism, improving the quality of life for the residents of our county. Growth happens when these things and these services are in place that are being provided. We should focus on making those investments which improve the quality of life for Jefferson County. Currently, we have, there's many parks and rec centers uh, that are abundant in other communities, but are virtually non-existent in most of the areas of our county. We'll work together to create these opportunities that will provide resources for the improvements of our river access points, playgrounds, park pavilions, walking trails, and all of this will be for our families, our seniors, and we'll work ways also to, with, the, with our county to improve the safety of obviously our roads and bridges and our septics and all the things that we need. And this is what I believe will bring a quality of life even higher to our county. Improving these services will attract families and businesses that move here and we believe it'll keep them from moving. As I had, and I'm sad to say, I had my daughters moved and my grandchildren moved out of High Ridge because they felt uh, my daughters with her five children just didn't have the services that they thought they could have just four miles into, I won't mention the district. <laughs> but I'll just say, what does that mean? <laughs> My son was supposed to be giving me cues back there. Ben, what were you doing back there? Oh, I was looking at my son. My campaign manager. He dropped the ball. Thank you, Brian. All right, thanks, Brian. I mean, huh? Okay. <laughs> Tell you that stop sign's dreaded. No, oh, it's dreaded. We now move to the County Council District 3 race. We have... Uh, uh, two candidates with us tonight. We began with the Republican candidate, Phil Hendrickson. Mr. Hendrickson was appointed to county council in September of 2017 to fulfill Bob Boyer's term uh, in the district after Bob was elected as Jefferson County Assessor. Mr. Hendrickson has been the owner-operator of an HVAC mechanical contracting business, writing and negotiating million-dollar contracts. He has volunteered his time serving on various nonprofit organizations as president, vice president, treasurer, and board member. He has also served on the John, uh, Jefferson County Code Commission for the last seven years and has been vice chair for the past three years. Please welcome Mr. Phil Hendrickson. Thank you. I am Phil Hendrickson. I've uh, been married 46 years to my wife. I don't see her, but she's here. 43 of those years we've lived in Jefferson County in the what is now District 3. Uh, and I also would like to thank JCGA and Jefferson College for allowing me the opportunity to share with you why I think I should be the next District 3 Councilman. I recently retired from Integrated Facility Services, a large union HVAC mechanical plumbing and fire protection contractor. Uh, as an estimator and project manager of projects actually in excess of $15 million. Uh, and as I said, I'm a 43-year resident of the county, of, of the Arnold area. And, uh, and I won't repeat what I, what the uh, September 5th I, or of last year, I was appointed to replace Bob Boyer as the, as the county council, councilman for District 3. Um, the past years serving the council has been a pretty exp uh, interesting experience. Over and above uh, the task of just getting up to speed with the various bills and related issues, um, but I feel it was, the challenge has been conquered. Uh, we have worked hard the past year that I, while I've been on the council, uh, we, I, we supported the passage of Prop P. Uh, with the help of Sheriff Marshak and uh, 
the council, we found funds to, in, to increase the county's participation in the employees' health insurance to offset the increase that was dramatic this past year. And we were also able to uh, increase, find funds to increase the cost of living for the employees to additionally help offset the insurance costs for 2018. If elected, I will work to improve the Jefferson County flood management, flood recovery and flood remediation, which is critical in this county, especially in District 2 and District 3 and District 7. Um, I will continue to support the continued progressive efforts of our public works director, Jason Jonas, in the improvement of our county roads and infrastructure. And I will work hard to look for meaningful, find meaningful economic development and jobs that will pay a reasonable livable, livable wage. I uh, will also continue to support Sheriff Marshak and the Sheriff's Department to ensure that they have the proper funds available to protect this, safely protect the residents of the county. And we also need to do some work on the UDO. It's, it's got some gaping holes and problems and it needs to be rewritten. Uh, I would appreciate the opportunity to continue to serve the residents of Di District 3 with fair, honest representation. I will have no hidden agendas. I will be a good steward for the taxpayers of the county to make sure when and where we spend that money is, is, is wisely spent. And I would like to be the voice of the, the District 3 residents. And I just ask for your vote for, to Phil, for Phil Hendricks from County Council District 3. Thank you. I didn't get the time. I didn't get it. The Democratic candidate for District 3 is Crystal Hargis. Ms. Hargis was initially elected to the Jefferson College Board of Trustees hmm, in 2001 uh, and has been re-elected twice, serving a total of 17 years to the present. Ms. Hargis has also held positions of the Board President, Vice President, and has been a member of the Board negoti uh, Trustees negotiating team. A lifelong resident of Arnold, Ms. Hargis taught school in the Fox School District for 30 years prior, prior to retiring in 2017. She and her husband own a small family business in Imperial. During her teaching career, uh, Crystal was active in her uh, and was an active member in her teachers' union, where she served as president, vice president, and treasurer. She also served as a member of the teachers' negotiating team. Please welcome Crystal Hargis. Which one? This one? Yeah, I need it down so I can <laughs> so I can reach. <laughs> Good evening. I appreciate everyone attending tonight. I am running for the position of Jefferson County Council District 3, which includes the majority of the city of Arnold and a portion of unincorporated Arnold. Serving the Jefferson County community is an important part of who I am. Jefferson County is not just any county in Missouri. It's my home. I am a lifelong resident of Arnold and a Fox graduate. When I married my high school sweetheart, Gary, 38 years ago, we decided to build our lives in Arnold, where we raised our two daughters. We established a small family business in Imperial 25 years ago. After graduating college, I wanted to return to my roots and teach the children of our community. During my time as an educator, I was an active member of the local teachers union and served on various education committees. I am honored to have served as a teacher in the Fox School District for 30 years. After serving 18 years as an elected member of the Jefferson College Board of Trustees, I know it's a long time, I have gained experience with meeting protocol, budgeting, policy procedures, and bid approval. I possess proven leadership abilities, a commitment to working as part of a team, which is extremely important at the current situation we have and a willingness to achieve compromise. I feel I would bring valuable insight to the issues that come before the Jefferson County Council. The issues and concerns of the residents of Je Jefferson County are essential to creating a connection between our county government and the growth and development of our community. 
I feel it is my duty as a member of the county council to ensure that the funds paid by taxpayers are used wisely. Unnecessary spending of taxpayer funds can greatly impact the infrastructure, the development, and the progress of our county. We must do our best to allocate the taxpayers' fu funds in a responsible manner. As a county council member, I feel it is imperative to foster policies which boost job development and assist in bringing companies and job expansion into our area. Working families deserve to have the opportunity to work for reputable companies from a multitude of industries. We need to encourage companies to explore the vast options our county has to offer. Jefferson County has had the Unified Development Order in place since April 2008. As a unified council, we need to move forward with the progress of the UDO. The purpose of the UDO is in place. Now our community needs council members who will bring the full plan to fruition. I would propose that the council undertake studies as a part of the charter's assigned duties Studies will enable the council to determine the types of businesses that would be a good fit for our county. Once we have those results, we can determine where we can locate these businesses within our own industry sector. This type of research has been utilized by nearby counties such as St. Louis and St. Charles. The growth and development of these counties are leaving Jefferson County far behind. Business growth initiates increased tax dollars and as well as increased job opportunities for our citizens. In addition, the council can take a leadership role in assembling a work group to aid in workforce de development. Workforce development can be useful in training and developing skills for our residents to retain jobs in our county. Another issue of concern is improving our infrastructure. We have existing bridges across the county that have reached a level that is unsafe. Some of the fire districts have expressed that they are reluctant to bring emergency vehicles across these bridges. The county needs to take a proactive approach to remedy this problem for the safety of our residents. As a wife and a mother, I do my best to take care of my family. As a teacher, I did my best to educate my students. As a small business owner, I provide the best customer service. As a board member, I do my best to provide fairness and equal opportunity to the staff and the students of Jefferson College. As a member of the County Council, I will do my best to provide a voice for the residents of Jefferson County. I would greatly appreciate your vote for Crystal Hargis for the County Council of District 3. Thank you. Well, this is the 2018 uh, Jefferson County Growth Association Candidates Forum. Uh, you're, you're listening to us on KGF Radio or watching us on JCTV or on one of our affiliated social uh, media networks. Our sponsors tonight include gold member uh, Dobbs Tire and Auto, silver members Govero Land Services and Comtree, and our forum sponsors Enterprise Bank, Firework City, and Lane Consolidated Services. We move now to County Council District 5. We have two candidates. We'll begin tonight with the Democratic candidate, Dan Darian. Uh, Mr. Darian was appointed to the Jefferson County Council in two, January 2018 to represent District 5. A resident of DeSoto, Mr. Darian is currently the Director of Residential Treatment Services for Great Circle, a nonprofit agency that provides psychiatric services for children and families throughout the state of Missouri. Previously, he worked for the Jefferson County and the 23rd Judicial Circuit for 19 years as a Deputy Juvenile Officer. Mr. Darian volunteers his time with the Knights of Columbus, and he is on the parish council at Our Lady Church in Festus. Please welcome, welcome Mr. Dan Darian. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Kaminsky, for the introduction. I'd also like to thank Jefferson County Growth Association and Jefferson College for sponsoring tonight's event. As was mentioned in the introduction, my name is Dan Darian, and I'm a candidate for County Council in Council District 5. I would like to start by giving you a little background about myself. I'm a lifelong resident of, of Jefferson County and District 5. I grew up here, 
attended school here, and like others, um, I'm a graduate of Jefferson College. Uh, I received my associate's degree here before moving on to St. Louis University to finish my education. My wife Tracy and I are raising our three children here. Jefferson County has always been my home and always will be. Most of my professional career was spent working for Jefferson County. I served this community for 19 years as a deputy juvenile officer, working in cooperation with the 23rd Judicial Circuit, local school districts, law enforcement, and families to work in the best interest of delinquent youth and to protect abused and neglected children in our community. My last few years with Jefferson County Juvenile Office were as the administrator of the county's adolescent drug treatment program in partnership with Comtree. Today I continue to work with troubled youth as the Director of Residential Treatment Services for Great Circle. I believe my background gives me a valuable perspective when it comes to serving the people of Jefferson County. Last year, I learned of the resignation of Council Member Jim Caston, who was representing my home district, District 5. Mr. Caston cited infighting and dysfunction occurring within the Council and between County Council and County Executive as one of the reasons for his resignation. I decided to volunteer to fill his vacant council seat in order to represent my district. When I did this, I knew it wouldn't be an easy task. And I was often met with questions from others like, why do you want to even be a part of that? Do you really know what you're getting yourself into? And some even asked if I was crazy. But my philosophy has always been that if something doesn't seem to be working the way it should, you have a choice. You can either ignore it and accept it the way it is, or work to try and improve it hopefully getting it to function in the way it should. I chose the latter. I believe the people of Jefferson County deserve a functional government that will provide the services that they need, be good stewards of their tax money, improve the county to encourage good paying jobs and industry to move to the area, and avoid scandal and negative press that hurts the image of Jefferson County. In December of last year, I was officially appointed to the council to represent my district, District 5. In my time spent on the council, I have supported actions that are good for the county, but have stood against unnecessary actions in the legislation that were not in the best interest of the people of Jefferson County, at times standing alone. I have approached all decisions by focusing on what is in the best interests of not only the people of my district, but for all of Jefferson County. I have taken a reasonable and thoughtful approach to making decisions so as not to put the county at risk for lawsuits, government shutdowns, and scandal. Anyone here tonight can tell you what they would like to do and why they think they're the best person to be elected. But I feel that during my time on the council, I have demonstrated by my actions the type of council person that I am and will continue to be if given the honor to further serve the people of my district. I would like to continue working to improve county government and representing the people of District 5, focusing on economic growth in our area for good paying jobs for our residents working to help the community with the current opioid and drug addiction crisis that plagues our county, and working to expand broadband access for those who live here. To do, to do this, I'm asking your, for your support this November. Together we can improve county government so that it is functioning and working as it should to better serve all who live here. Thank you for your time and support. Republican candidate for District County Council 5 is Tracy Perry. Tracy was able, unable to be here tonight, but she did send a representative, uh, retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Wayne Surratt. And uh, per our rules, he'll have three minutes to speak. Uh, Ms. Perry was elected to Jefferson R7 School District uh, Board of Education 2017. She's a resident of Festus and is a professional social worker who retired from the United States Army after a 22-year career where she advanced from the rank of private to major, serving both as a logistics officer and commander. Ms. Perry volunteers her time with the following organizations, the Macedon Science and Arts Fair, the Jefferson R7 Boosters, the Boy Scouts of America, and she's a founding board member of Project COPE. Speaking on behalf of Tracy Perry, uh, please welcome Wayne Surratt. Hi everybody, I'm Wayne Surratt. Uh, if you've ever arrived at a podium not knowing exactly what you're going to say and uh, speaking on somebody else's behalf, that would be me tonight. So um, fortunately, I've only got three minutes. Um, I, uh, 
Tracy wasn't able to be here tonight due to a, an illness in the family, and she asked me to come talk to her. And I think the best way for me to talk to her is not with a, uh, a prepared comment or a speech or something. Uh, it's to talk to you from the heart, because that's really what I think she's uh, the most effective. Uh, I served with her on the Jefferson R7 school board, been with her for about a year and a half on the school board, and have come to know her as a person of uh, tremendous um, uh, caring, of, of character and, and intellect. Uh, she has made all of us better on the, on the Jefferson board, and she's done that by uh, coming prepared to the meetings. You know, uh, if anybody's been on the school board before, you know before the meeting, you get a, a stack of documents about like that to, to read and prepare for the, the action to come. Um, she reads every word of it, and, uh, and when we get into our discussions, um, if you haven't read every word of it, she's going to let you know it because you need to be prepared because we're making real important decisions. So Tracy makes the people around her better because of her hard work and the character she shows. Tracy only knows one way to do things, and that's the right way. She doesn't compromise on ethics. She won't compromise on character. And, and she's a woman who is going to build bridges. She doesn't care if she likes you. She doesn't care if you don't like her. She cares about what's best for kids. And that's you know, in our, our perspective on the school board, what's best for kids, what's best for our district. And that's the way she approaches things. So she's a person who's going to build consensus. She's going to look for that middle ground. She's going to grab people from each side and say, hey, this is where we can meet. And I think it's fair to say that uh, our council has sometimes not been able to find middle ground recently. And I think if we send Tracy to the council, um, she's going to help us do that. And uh, uh, she's going to be a, a person of character. And, uh, she'll, she'll help uh, bring these folks together and, uh, and do things that are good for the, for the community. And one of the things that I think is real important to know, candidates can say, I want to come to the board or I want to come to the council and I want to do this. These are my goals. I'm going to do this, this, and this. But what every person in this room needs to understand is that council person can't do anything alone. Council person's got to talk to the people that are out in the community, find out what they want, talk to the other six members of the council, find out, hey, how are we going to find common ground? How are we going to move the community forward? You know, to move our community forward, to develop us economically, we need to lay a foundation and a framework that makes business want to come to Jefferson County. Don't pass us by going to St. Louis. Um, when St. Louis makes a mistake as a community, you know, Jefferson needs to seize it and say, hey, we'll take it, we'll do it. Um, so we need to do things like support our, our police department, which uh, uh, Tracy's a friend with uh, Sheriff Marshak, and as a social worker and a retired Army officer, you know she leans towards law enforcement, and she's going to continue that on the council. Um, she's a great collaborator. She'll collaborate with city officials to bring services, to collaborate and bring um, our, our resources unified to, uh, to help better serve our, our candidates and uh, our, our community. And I just got the dreaded stop sign. I don't think it's fair that I only got three minutes. So <laughs> um, it, it, Tracy's a fantastic person. I hope you get to know her, and I hope you come out and, and support her come, uh, come November. Thank you very much. All right, we now move to County Council District 7, and we'll begin with the Republican candidate, uh, incumbent Jim Terry. Uh, as I mentioned, Jim Terry currently serves as Jefferson County Councilman since 2015. He's also served on the Big River Ambulance District and the Jefferson County 911 Dispatch Board. Uh, Jim works for Boeing, McDonnell Douglas, and uh, designing defensive electronic systems for advanced technical aircraft. He retired from Boeing after 30 years. Mr. Terry has volunteered his time with the organizations such as the Highway WMM Task Force, the Cedar Hill Food Pantry, and the Lang Valley Subdivision uh, trustees, uh, Board of Trustees. He's also served for 17 years as a volunteer tax preparer for low and moderate income seniors with the AARP Tax Aid Program since 2001. Please welcome Mr. Jim Terry. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Ray. Uh, good evening. First, I want to thank uh, the college, JCGA, uh, KJFF, and especially the sponsors for putting this event on. As was mentioned, I've been deeply involved in community service for the past 18 years since we moved here to God's Country in Jefferson County, and for the past three and a half years on the council. I'd like to continue for another four years. The following are some of my accomplishments on the council and priorities for the future. When I campaigned, I promised to be readily available to can help constituents to be transparent and keep people informed what was going on. I promised to work to get more businesses and jobs. 
I said I'd give priority to getting more sewer service for District 7. We're the most rural area. To do these things, I established a Facebook page that has my cell phone number on it so people can call me if they have issues with the county. I post information on the Facebook page, on that page, uh, before all council and planning and zoning meetings, letting people know of any, ish, any items of interest to the district. I post many other items, such as events, especially those that would help our veterans. I respond quickly to all phone calls. I work with a number of businesses and numerous residents to help with their concerns. I made many trips to areas that were flooded to let people know of sources of help. They were pretty desperate. They didn't know what was going on. After being elected, uh, I joined the High Ridge Rotary, the Northwest Chamber. I attend Economic Development Corporation meetings and Port Authority meetings since those are <coughs> some of the best opportunities for growth in the jobs and business areas. Let's me network with people involved with bringing more businesses and jobs to the county. I work closely with the college, with Je uh, Brian, uh, looking for more ways to get young people and those unemployed to know of all the jobs available in the skilled trades and to encourage them to get training. My work with the college and a suggestion resulted in them getting a grant for a new 12-week program that just started to let people learn of many possibilities in the skilled trades by getting two weeks training in each of many trades so they can choose the one that is of most interest. I work to get the word out that people can repair their septic system. In many instances, instead of shelling out twenty to thirty thousand dollars for a new system, it is an option. I push the administration to provide a brochure to anyone tagged with a failed septic system that they do have an option of repairing the system. It also identified sources for grants and low interest loans for either a new or a repaired system. It lists approved companies to do the work. I work closely with the Jefferson County Public Sewer District to expand their sewer system and to take over failed private sewer plants. One example is I work with the Missouri Public Service Commission and two receivers for three years so that the sewer district could take over the failed sewer plants for four subdivisions in Cedar Hill, another one in Hillsboro, which their owner had become bankrupt. This helped over 250 families in the area. Besides the above, some other accomplishments during the past three and a half years include working with the administration and the Corps of Engineers to develop a landscape plan and to landscape the historic House Springs County Park, otherwise known as the Pond. It's located in the heart of the business district of House Springs and had been allowed to be an overgrown eyesore it's now nicely landscaped and maintained, but does need a fountain or other help to keep the algae down. My request to public works resulted in House Springs Historic Main Street receiving funding for a major upgrade to encourage redevelopment of this historic area. And I also got rid of the 20 mile an hour signs and school zones that said on school days when children are present. No one knew what that meant, including deputies. We now have flashing beacons and more realistic speed limits. There is still a lot that needs to be accomplished in many of these areas. If re-elected, I plan to continue working in these areas and to work to improve access to broadband internet. I would appreciate your support. Please vote on November 6th, perfectly for me. Thank you. The Democratic candidate for council, County Council District 7 is Amy Genowine. Ms. Jane, Ms. Genowine was elected to Northwest R1 School District uh, Board of Education in April of 2017. A resident of House Springs, she is the grocery manager for Price Chopper in House Springs. She's been employed with Price Chopper for the past 12 years, and she serves as a union shop steward for UFCW Local 655. Please welcome Amy Genowine. Good evening. Get a little bit more adjustment there. 
So first of all, I'd like to thank the Jefferson County Growth Association and the Jefferson College for hosting this event, this forum this evening. Without that, many of these candidates would not be caught in the same room together, would they? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny too, and I was writing it down, I'm like, should I say that? Should I not? So I said it, so let me tell you why I said it, and that is because I think the Democratic and the Republicans perspective when it comes to the County Council only furthers that divide. You know, there's already the divide because you have different personalities coming together and trying to figure things out. But when we're talking Democratic and Republican, you know, you already have your opinion made up sometimes going into these meetings and trying to resolve issues. So I don't think that it should be about that. The County Council has the legis legislative powers in the county to, and controls all of those powers. And we're supposed to provide a high quality of life and be servants of the people. They should never bring with them their partisan bias when making decisions that affect the entirety of this county. The labels of Democrat and Republican can at times simply deepen the divide, making it next to impossible to work together. When I am elected, I will work not as a Democrat, but as a servant of the people as I should. It is my desire to bring a new and more youthful perspective to our council and to also aid in breaking down some of those figurative walls that have been built between members and residents. I'm a single mother of four beautiful children who range in age from 15 to four. Four girls, so yes, you can feel sorry for me. <laughs> And that means I have a vested interest in your county and the success, our county, and the success and the growth of this county. When asked by my family and my friends how I find time to be involved in so much, my answer is always the same. We find time for what's important, and this is important. Education and offering opportunities for our youth are passions of mine. I'd like the opportunity to work with the college and to explore ways to expand those trades programs because, let's face it, not every kid is a four-year college kid and bachelor's degrees aren't for everybody. So by continuing to improve and offer alternatives, we can ensure their success long term. Being a UFCW 655 shop steward has given me so many wonderful learning opportunities. The most important lesson that I've learned holding this position for the last 11 years is that those who sit idly by and witness oppression are as guilty as the oppressor. So when faced with the opportunity to stand up to injustice, I always will, even if I'm standing alone. My girls and I are on the lookout always for ways in the county to engage, stay active, and learn. I absolutely love the county. However, my district is lacking in the Parks and Recreations Department. I'd like to see a rec center erected in my district and watch the magic of a community coming together to learn, to exercise, celebrate, and grow. I'll support and help with measures for this in the county. It also will create job opportunities as well, which is something I also support. Campaign work has given me the opportunity to talk with and learn from so many amazing residents. One of the top complaints received by residents when I speak with them is that they have a concern for the interest in engaging residents shown by the council members. Many residents express that they feel their voices are stifled and their concerns are not serious enough for the council to consider. This is an issue in considering the council labels themselves servants of the people. My proposed remedy for this issue would be to engage residents at my district in local town hall meetings on a regular basis. During these meetings, I would allow the residents to take the floor, discuss issues, and exchange ideas on how we can, and entertain motions on how we can fix those issues. Perhaps they similarly want to say, share a story or have somebody listen, and that's fine too, because it's about coming together and being attentive to their needs. There wouldn't be a short time limit for speaking. I know sometimes at those council meetings, you know, you have your five minutes or you have your three minutes. That's not enough to say what we need to say. So for me, working with the residents will be priority always. I've been a lifelong county resident, most of that time spent in House Springs. Growing up in my neighborhood was peaceful, quiet. You could leave the door unlocked, the car unlocked. I recently purchased a home in that same neighborhood on the same street with the idea that my kids would grow up and create the same wonderful memories. And in fact, that's not reality. In my neighborhood, I've had my gas siphoned from my car, I've had my vehicle broken into, and drugs are running rampant. <clears throat> I could move, I could unpack and start over somewhere else, but I refuse to give up on this county I love so much. This is where my roots are, and this is where I wanna live out my days. And I hope you'll consider me for County Council District 7. Thank you. Okay, we now move to the race of county clerk, and we begin with the Democratic candidate, <coughs> incumbent Randy Holman. Mr. Holman currently serves as a county clerk. He previously served as the Jefferson County Assessor for 16 years. He was also a member of the Festus R6 School Board uh, 
School Board of Education for 15 years. Mr. Holman has volunteered his time with the Missouri Association of County Clerks and elected authorities. He, uh, it's an organization that focuses on election laws and improved voter accessibility and the Missouri State Tax Commission. He has also served on numerous local and state civic organizations. Please welcome Randy Holman. Good evening. I would like to thank Jefferson College and Jefferson County Growth Association for hosting Meet the Candidate Night and giving me the opportunity to introduce myself to those of you that may not know me. I currently serve as your Jefferson County Clerk and I am a lifelong resident of Jefferson County. After graduating from Herculaneum High School, I attended Jefferson College, received my two-year degree and then transferred to Southeast Missouri State University and obtained a, my bachelor's degree in business administration. <coughs> My wife Tammy and I raised two daughters and our nephew, all of whom are graduates of Jefferson College as well. Additionally, we have two son-in-laws that are first responders and a daughter-in-law that works with preschoolers in South St. Louis. We are the very, very proud grandparents of six grandchildren ranging from six years down to 21 months. I truly am very fortunate to have been given the opportunity to serve as your county clerk. I have worked hard to demonstrate that that was a good choice in a good choice in the future as well. Since being appointed to the position of county clerk, I've been able to implement some very positive changes that will well serve the voters and residents of Jefferson County for many years to come. These changes include replacing the old, worn out, obsolete voting system that was based on 1995 technology with new state of the art system that will serve Jefferson County voters for many years to come. Enhancing our social media curriculum to provide voters with vital information such as how to register, registration deadlines, absentee voting information, sample ballots, and much more. Implementing numerous operational changes to ensure transparency and to reinforce the integrity of our voting system. This November you will see first-hand example of of this as we introduce our new voter-friendly election result reporting module that will allow you immediate access to the querying of election results in a manner never before available. And one of my proudest implementations since becoming your county clerk is the development of the Missouri Youth Election Participation Program we rolled out this past August. This program is a cooperative effort of of our high schools and it encourages 15 to 17 year olds students recommended by their high school to assist election officials on election day. We had 43 students participate this past August and we look forward to working with our students to involve young people in all future elections. As a society, if we truly wish to improve voter participation and voter turnout, we must engage our young people at an early age so they realize every election and every vote counts. These young adults performed outstandingly in August, and we look forward to engaging them in November. The most visual function of the county clerk is the administration of the voter registration role and the overseeing of elections. While these are vital functions, there are many additional duties performed by the county clerk's office. We are the accounts payable department for county transactions. We certify tax roll totals for all taxing jurisdictions. We maintain the official records and ordinances of our county governing body, and we issue license and permits as authorized by those very ordinances. Because of the nature of our functions, we work firsthand with every county department and elected officials to ensure purchases, bonds, official records are accessible to them so that they may perform their duties. It's a position that must be run in a nonpartisan fashion, and I feel I operate in that manner. I realize the role of the county clerk is to ensure all county officials and departments are provided the information the clerk's office maintains so that they may make informed, qualified decisions. The role of the county clerk is to be a team player, to be knowledgeable of and administrate vast amounts of information that impact all of county government. The role of the county clerk is multifaceted, and I have learned it takes a much effort and dedication to be effective. I am proud of the direction of the county clerk's office is currently heading. I am not one to be complacent because I know we can always improve. And in today's rapid changing world, if you are not striving to move forward, you are moving backwards. Although I've been your county clerk for only a brief period of time, I ask that you 
look at what we've accomplished, share my vision for more efficiency, transparency, fiscal accountability, and the engagement of our youth. I ask that on November 6th you give me the opportunity to continue on as your county clerk and I will work hard to earn that opportunity. Thank you very much. Republican candidate for county clerk is Ken Waller. Mr. Waller was elected Jefferson County's first county executive in November 2010, and he has served in this capacity since that time. Previously, he served as the Jefferson County Treasurer from 2004 to 2008. Mr. Waller's community involvement includes the East West Gateway Council of Governments, the Missouri Association of Counties, Comtree Board, the YMCA Board, the Economic Development Corporation of Jefferson County, and the Jefferson Franklin Community Action Corporation. Please welcome Mr. Ken Waller. Well, the first thing I better do is uh, say hi to my mom out there. Uh, she's not out in the audience. She's actually listening on the radio because she told me to smile and to keep it short. So Barb, her name's Barb Phillips. I know she's listening, so I love you and I appreciate you. Get all the thank yous out of the way first. Jefferson College, JCTV, KJFF, and the Jefferson County Growth Association for putting on this great event. Thanks to all the candidates, both Republican and Democrat, for your willingness to serve our great county. I want to have a big thank you to all of the great citizens of Jefferson County for allowing me to serve the past eight years as the first county executive. It's been a hard job, and I haven't, I've, I've done some good things, and there's been some other things maybe not so good at times, but you know what? It's a chore, and I envy Mr. Rorder and Mr. Gannon. You got a, you got a, a big thing to do in this job, so uh, I, I, I hope you do well. It has been both an honor and privilege to serve in this capacity. Finally, to my beautiful wife, Trina, for allowing me to fulfill my dreams to be a public servant for over 12 years. A little bit about myself, lifelong resident of the county and married for 28 years. I have three children, Kayla, Tyler, and Trevor, and a son-in-law, Derek. And as of 8.01 that I know of, no grandchildren as of yet. <laughs> so we are proud owners of three Yorkie Poo puppies, April, Ruby, and Reese's, and they are fun to be around. I'm a graduate of this great college in 82 with an associate's degree in business and a graduate of UMSL in 1985 with a bachelor's degree in public administration. I've been a licensed insurance agent since 1990. I've worked for State Farm Insurance for five years and Shelter for 10. And as uh, Dr. Kaminsky said, I was the county treasurer from 04 to 08, and finally county executive from 2010 to 2018. Even though you have heard uh, tonight from at least one county executive candidate that the past eight years has been nothing but fighting and lawsuits, between the executive and the county council, that could not be further from the truth. There have been many accomplishments in the past eight years, and I will list a few of those. Tripling our general revenue county reserves to over six million, it started at two. Refinancing of long-term debt incurred before we took office, saving taxpayers $3 million. Employee raises over the past eight years of almost 25%, including a revised salary study of all employees except the sheriff's department, because they have their own matrix. That was done in 2018. A new emergency management operations center located in Herculaneum, new light fleet building and heavy fleet building located in Hillsboro. Both of those, or all three of those, paid for in cash, no debt. Purchase and future renovation of a new animal control resource, excuse me, resource center off of Highway 30. We all, myself and all the council members, huge supporters of Proposition P, which helps support the sheriff's department with higher wages, vehicles, et cetera. And just recently uh, put in a new subdivision road program uh, just in 2018. Finally, through my year membership on the Executive Board of East West Gateway Council of Governments, I've lobbied for it, helped secure more than $100 million in federal fu matching funds while leveraging the county's 20% match to pay for a wide variety of improvements to the road and bridge infrastructure in Jefferson County. In 2016, I served as the chairman on this very influential board. I was the first and only Jefferson County to serve as chairman. Now to the reason why we are here tonight. Why should voters choose Ken Waller to this position? My 12 years experience in county government gives me a very unique perspective for this position as a county executive. The past eight years, I have worked with their office on a very frequent basis and understand their many functions. My goals, if elected, would be to make it easier for veterans, the elderly, and disabled to vote, strong lobby for a no-excuse absentee voting legislation to increase voter turnout, getting young people involved in the voting and election process, especially college students, creating helpful apps to conduct business concerning the county clerk's office, this could help with voter registration and election day information. It could also include sample ballots in polling places. In closing, 
I would like to now talk about my race with Randy Holman. I am thoroughly enjoying the challenge of running a race against Mr. Holman, just like we did against each other in 2010 for County Executive. When Wes Wagner resigned a couple of years ago, I had to appoint someone to take his place. According to the charter, it had to be a Democrat. Mr. Wagner had done a great job running the office, so picking his replacement was going to be tough. After much thought and reflection and prayer, I chose Mr. Holman. I knew he'd be professional, trustworthy, and he has done just that. Thank you, Mr. Holman. Mr. Holman and I have been friends for almost 30 years, and we know that win or lose our election, that God will take care of us and our families. I feel I can be a new perspective and have a long-term vision for this position, and I'm very, working very hard to win this race. Finally, I would like to speak to all the candidates running. One of the things that I learned early in my political career from the late Ron Casey was to stay humble. In politics, that is very hard. I have followed that advice sometimes, but failed miserably other times. Do your best to stay humble and surround yourself with good people. Remember, your good friends will tell you what you need to hear not always what you want to hear. Good luck to everyone running on November the 6th. Thank you for allowing me to speak, and may God bless you all. This is the Jefferson County Growth Association Candidates Forum, and we're br bringing this to you from Jefferson College. Uh, our sponsors tonight are Dobbs Tire and Auto, uh, Govoro Land Services, Enterprise Bank, Comtree, Fireworks City, and Lane Consolidated Services. And if you missed us live, you can always catch us on one of the various social media forums on JCTV and KJF Radio. We now move to the race of prosecuting attorney, and we begin with the Republican candidate, Tricia Stefanowski. A resident of Fenton, Ms. Stefanowski served as citizens of Jefferson County, uh, served the citizens of Jefferson County as assistant prosecuting attorney for 11 years. Prior to working in the prosecutor's office, she practiced law as a personal injury attorney and later moved on into general practice in Columbia, Missouri. She is currently a member of the Immaculate Conception <laughs> Athletic Association and the Drug Endangered Children's Coalition. Please welcome Tricia Stefanowski. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Trisha Stavansky. Happens a lot, <laughs> happens a lot. <laughs> uh, I wanna thank the Jefferson County Growth Association and the Jefferson College for hosting this Meet the Candidate Forum tonight. Prior to becoming a prosecutor, I worked a variety of jobs. I have been a server, a bartender, a retail clerk, a front desk clerk. I have been a manager of a Walgreens and a Taco Bell and a paralegal. I have a strong work ethic, which I inherited from my parents. My father, a Vietnam vet, and a retired union pressman from the St. Louis um, Post-Dispatch. My mother was a lifelong career in customer service. But I didn't just inherit a strong work ethic from them. I also inherited the value of family and community. Patrick and I care about Jefferson County where we are raising our family. He owns his own gun refinishing business in Peavley. We are raising our family in, in Fenton, Missouri. I am the communications chair for Immaculate Conception Athletic Association and often volunteer at Holy Child School in Arnold where my children attend. If asked to volunteer for community events, I almost always say I am in. As a longtime prosecutor, I have seen the trends in crime, from stealing from vehicles to stealing vehicles, from burglarizing homes to robbing the person on the street, from meth labs to ice or crystal meth. With the change in the crime trends, there needs to come new ways of prevention and punishment, and I am prepared to bring those changes. Without law enforcement, the prosecutor's office does not function. Likewise, without prosecutors, criminals are not held accountable. We need each other. For the past 11 years, I have been standing alongside these brave men and women to protect our community. I have worked to strengthen our relationship by presenting legal updates and certain seizure classes, as well as report writing and other refresher courses. I make myself available to answer questions and give advice no matter the time of day or night. As your elected prosecutor, I will continue to strengthen this bond. Our office will host a training and update sessions at least once a year, and I ask the same of law enforcement. Police officers go through their own training, whether it be the use of tasers, use of force, or new regulations for field testing. These are things that our office needs to know as well so we can understand each other and work together to bring justice to our community. All of us in the prosecutor's office are public servants. Our job is to protect and serve the community. We are beyond the age of strict punishment. Now I'm not talking about murderers, rapists, child molesters, sex offenders, or drug dealers. Let me say that again. I am not talking about murderers, 
rapists, child molesters, sex offenders, or true drug dealers. Those are vile people, a class all on their own. I am talking about substance abusers, which is the underlying cause of most of our low-level crimes. I believe that our office should be a tool for the community. I am a member of the Drug Endangered Children Coalition and the Jefferson County Drug Prevention Coalition. I have spoken at church gatherings and co-hosted opiate awareness nights. Just today, I attended and spoke at an opiate summit put on by the U.S. Attorney's Office in conjunction with the DEA and other agencies. I learned about other programs that other agencies and other counties are doing, and I intend to bring those to Jefferson County. I will enhance our presence with court programs for veterans, drug defendants, and DWI court, because sometimes good people make mistakes, and sometimes it, make, it takes just a little community support to help, for instance, the child who growing up was surrounded by drugs and just wants to break the cycle. Like it or not, the opiate crisis affects us all and we can fight it together by prosecution, education, prevention, community, engagement, and aggressive outreach. We do this by uniting law enforcement, EMS, firefighters, and the courts to fight together to minimize the effect of the opioids. Now, please do not take my second chance stance as that I am soft. I've earned a reputation for being tough but fair. I am not the parent who warns and warns and warns and never follows through nor am I that prosecutor. I believe that if you choose the benefit of probation, then you follow those rules. And when you don't, there will be consequences. I believe in transparency and the power of social media. We are in a digital age, an age, right or wrong, where people are getting their news by scrolling through their phone at a stoplight, in a carpool lane, or through the drive-through. People want to be informed. They may not always like the answers, but they want them. As your prosecutor, our office will take a page from Sheriff Marshak and we will join social media. We will use this to inform our community of law changes, charging decisions, sentencings, and verdicts, as well as community events. We will be available to the public. No one asks to be a victim. No one asks for personal lives to be invaded, to feel violated. The worst possible happened to them, and then to top it off, they have to deal with the court systems. Their case might not be resolved for years. As your prosecutor, I will do my best to speed up the process, knowing that it will never make a victim whole, but at least help them move on. I thank you for your attention and your support. I ask for your vote on November 6th. Together, we can build a stronger, safer Jefferson County. Stefanski, Stefan <laughs> never mind, sorry about that. Our Democratic candidate for prosecuting attorney is Tom Hollingsworth. Tom is a lifelong resident of Jefferson County and uh, a resident of Festus. Mr. Hollingsworth is a felony prosecutor with 11 years experience in his position. He's also experienced in criminal defense. Prior to his work as an attorney, he served this country in the United States Navy. Please welcome Mr. Tom Hollingsworth. He got the name right, but I'm from Victoria. Not that that makes a lot of difference. Uh, Dr. Ray, J. Jefferson County Growth Association, members of the press and public, thank you. Let me add my thanks to everybody else's. Let me add. My own special thanks to my wife of 17 years who's been sitting there holding my hand for the rest of this evening. I am Tom Hollingsworth, and I graduated from this institution in 1998 and then went to Truman State and then Washington University Law School, where my grandfather, Herb Moss, went to law school. I am a third-generation Jefferson County lawman. My mother's people, the Mosses, were here before statehood. How you doing, Cousin Husky? Uh, after I got my license to practice law, I practiced law with my father in Hillsboro. I'm raising my children in the place I grew up. You've heard this same thing repeated. I'm saying these things to demonstrate my commitment to Jefferson County. And by that I mean the welfare of its people and their property. The prosecuting attorney protects the people and their property by seeking punishment for wrongdoers in circuit court. I'm seeking responsibility for the administration of justice not the administration of revenue. Now the flashy part of prosecution, that crime fight and courtroom work, including jury trials, I've got that. You, you wanna find out? Come to circuit court October 9, uh, 9 10, and 11. I got a jury trial division six. Uh, November 1st, another jury trial division six. But you know, that's only part of the responsibility. The prosecutor's office collects taxes, child support, bad checks, Restitution. The county prosecutor handles all traffic tickets written by the highway patrol, the conservation agents, the railroad police. Yes, that's a thing. Uh, handles driver's license cases. There's a staff of a little more than a dozen lawyers in the office. 
I manage more personnel than that in the Navy. My experience is what makes me the best candidate for the job. Like Tricia, I've got about 11 years as a prosecutor. Before that, I spent three years doing criminal defense work. I've done jury trials on the other side. In the office, during those 11 years, I've done just about every job, gone up and then back down to misdemeanors and then back up to felonies. Right now, I'm doing all the DWI cases. Um, I'm specialized right now, but I am a competent generalist, and you have to know what everybody in the office is doing to competently manage the office. Just over a dozen assistant prosecutors. Among them, they file a 1,000 or so new felony cases, twice that in misdemeanors. That's a year. The trick is identifying the 2% or so of criminals who really are a threat. Now, just for myself, I hate a thief. But the average car burglar is someone's idiot child. And while such as them do a lot of the crimes in Jefferson County, the ones to watch are different. By their conduct, you shall know them. First-time offenders should be let off easy with the hope that they'll correct their behavior. Many do. Most do, although in this line of work, you only see the ones that come back. I would teach my prosecutors to read a criminal history and more to find out who it is they're dealing with before they decide what to do with them. Every time I would have a person jailed, and Amy, I recognize that you would like to have people jailed for siphoning your gas out of your tank. I get that. And maybe a little jail is in order. But if I would have a person jailed for any length of time, I would make sure that the person deserves it and that there's a genuine purpose in protecting the people and property of the people of Jefferson County. Um, before we go spending all that money on county housing and food, remember the administration of revenue you've heard so much about from the county council candidates. I've never seen the point in jailing stoners. All right? Now, a junkie burglar wouldn't think twice. Once in a while, a couple of dozen times a year, the prosecutor's office encounters a genuinely dangerous person. Imagine a drug-crazed serial burglar or someone with a violent temper and an itchy trigger finger. Those persons need to be identified quickly and gotten off the streets by the appropriate legal means. I have done so when I find them, and I will continue to do so as your prosecuting attorney. The goal is to protect the people of Jefferson County. This does not the same as filling prison beds nor is that goal well served by the letting the little fish go by without sufficient punishment. I'm a big fan of 30 days in the county jail. Thank you very much. Our next race is Recorder of Deeds, and we'll begin with the Democratic candidate, Aaron Caston. A resident of Peavley, Ms. Caston is currently a paralegal at Westhoff Law in Arnold. She previously served as a Missouri Probation and Parole Officer and a Victim Services and Prisoner Reentry Program Director for the Criminal Justice Ministry of the Society of Vincent de Paul. Uh, her community involvement include uh, serving as the Treasurer for the St. Louis Area Rep Restorative Justice Collaboration. She's the past Chairman of the St. Louis Area National Crime Victims' Right Committee and was a member of the U.S. Department of Justice Anti-Terrorism Advisory Committee for the Eastern District of Missouri. Please welcome Aaron Caston. Hi. Good evening. First, I'd like to start by thanking the Jefferson County Growth Association and Jefferson College for hosting this event. I think it's so important for voters to have opportunities like this to hear from the people who are seeking to represent them. So thank you for those who are watching and listening for being engaged in our local political process. As Dr. Kaminsky said, I'm Erin Kasten and I'm running for Recorder of Deeds. I'm proud to come from Jefferson County, and I'm grateful to be raising my two daughters here. My family has been in Jefferson County for generations, and my daughters, Lane and Finley, who are sitting over there, will be fourth generation graduates of Herculaneum High School. Jefferson County is a great community filled with caring and hardworking people, and I would be honored to serve as your next recorder of deeds. Just to give you a little bit more insight into my background, 
I have spent the majority of my career working with crime victims and individuals with felony convictions. First as a Missouri Probation and Parole Officer, was I, where I was a member of SEIU Local 2000, and later at the Criminal Justice Ministry of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, where I developed a victim service program focused on serving victims of identity theft and fraud, including property fraud. I also developed several prisoner reentry programs that provided services to those who, re who were returning home from prison with the goal to reduce homelessness and crime. I'm proud to say that less than 10% of our graduates returned to prison after three years, compared to the national average of over 66% who returned to prison. I have successfully written over 20 grants, which provided the majority of funding for our programs, and I also was responsible for preparing and managing those programs' budgets. You know, I was always aware that the funds that we were awarded were other people's money, whether it was taxpayer dollars or foundation funds or small personal donations. And while public safety was always the number one goal, I felt that it was equally as important to be a good steward for those monies that we were so fortunate to receive. We did not take our funding for granted. We worked diligently to provide the best services to the most people at the lowest cost. And we were able to accomplish this by working in collaboration with other nonprofits and government agencies, applying best practices, and staying mission focused. I will bring these same skills and commitment to financial responsibility to the Recorder of Deeds Office. Currently, I'm a paralegal at Westoff Law in Arnold, and we do a fair amount of work with Recorder of Deeds offices in counties across the state. One thing I have noticed about our office in Hillsborough is that the process for searching for deeds or other documents is not very efficient or accessible. Currently, if you need to search for or print a document, you either have to drive to the recorder's office in Hillsborough or pay a fee to search online. This is inconvenient and, frankly, unnecessary. If elected, I would establish a free service to search for and print documents remotely. Other counties offer this service for free, and I see no reason why that option shouldn't be made available to the residents of Jefferson County. I would also like to further modernize the office by accepting credit card payments as a convenience to those who utilize the office. And I want everyone who meets the legal requirement for marriage to feel welcome when applying for a marriage license. When I've been out talking to voters, one of the questions I've been asked the most is, why are you running for recorder of deeds? Well, certainly I see a need for change in the recorder's office. And as someone who often uses the services of this office, I believe I am qualified to streamline processes in order to make that office more effective. I believe in open, transparent government that provides services that are easily accessible to the people of Jefferson County. Another reason why I wanted to run for this office is that I believe that we should have a choice in every race, in every election. How else do we ensure accountability? A competitive race for every office and every election is the best tool that we have to hold our elected officials accountable. Choice is a key element of democracy. And finally, on a more personal note, my interest in government and politics began at a fairly young age. My late grandfather was the county assessor here in Jefferson County, and I have great memories of spending time with him as a child, going to campaign events and working the polls on election day. And I want to make those same memories with my daughters. I want them to see the importance in being involved in public service and the political process. I'm raising my girls to be strong young women who stay true to their convictions and don't let anything get in their way. I want them to be hardworking, compassionate and caring, and yet unafraid. And the best way that I know how to instill these values in my daughters is to show them by my example, by my actions. I hope I have done that tonight and throughout my campaign, and I hope I have made my grandfather and my daughters proud. I hope I can earn your support in this race. Again, I am Erin Kasson, and I'm running for Recorder of Deeds, and I would appreciate your vote on November the 6th. Thank you. The Republican candidate for Recorder of Deeds is incumbent Debbie Dunnigan Waters. Ms. Dunnigan Waters has served as the Jefferson County Recorder of Deeds for the past eight years, as well as she was elected to the Grandview R2 School District, serving four-year term from 2009 to 2013. She has 22 years experience uh, administratively and 18 years experience in land title research, including 10 years as a title examiner. 
and her community involvement includes the Jefferson County uh, United, University of Missouri Extension, excuse me, Council for two years from 2014 to 2016. Please welcome Debbie Dunnigan Waters. Did you know that the ownership of property is the foundation of a free people? Did you know that the county recorder of deeds office is the cornerstone on that foundation? Did you know that this office was established as the only means to track the ownership of real estate? Jefferson County's history, our family's heritage, is revealed in these records and it is the recorder's responsibility to protect and preserve it. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is Debbie Donegan Waters and I am your recorder of deeds. For me, being your recorder is not just a title. I'm a hands-on public servant. It's common to come to my office and find me working one-on-one -on -one at the service counter, in the public search library, or on the telephone. When one of my staff is off for the day, I fill in with their duties as well as my own to ensure the workflow. My door is always open. When you ask for me, you get me, no questions asked. I even have my direct extension on my business cards, my cell phone, on my, on my campaign material. Now when I took this office in 2011, our indexes were a disaster requiring a 100% revision. I immediately set standards of uniformity and data entry and began revising the index to correct all the errors and input complete data. Through this process known as back indexing, more than 520,000 document entries have been corrected. You heard that number correctly, half a million. That number increases every single day. I brought this office into the modern era I implemented electronic recording, which is a process that streamlines the process of getting your deeds recorded and back to you quickly. An average of 60% of our daily recordings come in electronically. I have entire deed and plat history back to 1819, digitally enhanced and imported on a secure online database. Not only can you access these records without handling the books and microfilm, but you have access to them anywhere you have a computer. You do not need to know, I'm sorry, did you know that when these records are not accessible for any reason, such as tornadoes, fires, computer failure, commerce stops? I've made sure that all of our records are replicated on secure servers so that no matter what kind of disaster hits this county, I can have our systems back up and running within six hours. I've acquired the entire survey file from a retiring fourth generation survey company, giving Jefferson County a survey database second only to the state archives. Did you know that all it takes to cloud the ownership is a negligent notary? I have implemented a property fraud alert system that protects people and property owners from land and identity theft. Now you may not have thought that the work done in this office was that important, but it is. And the function of this purpose of this office is too vital to people's everyday lives and to our economy to be put in the hands of anyone who doesn't understand it or have a passion to protect it. It takes more than a pretty face, it takes a strong leader, but it also takes compassion and it takes understanding for the situations that people find themselves in. I am that leader. I have 18 years experience in land records and how to search a chain of ownership. You will never be able to help someone in this office without having that knowledge. So on November 6th, I'm asking you to put politics aside and to vote for the only person in this race that is going to be able to help you when you need it. That would be me, Debbie Dunnigan Waters, your recorder of deeds, because experience really does matter. Thank you, and God bless. We will now move to the collector revenue race. We have one candidate with us tonight, Republican Lisa Brewer-Short. 
Uh, lifelong Jefferson County resident, Ms. Brewer Short has held an administrative position with Mercy Hospital for 18 years. Her community involvement includes time that she spends volunteering with the Jefferson County Republican Club and the Cedar Hill Elks Lodge as a five year of trustee. Please welcome Lisa Brewer Short. Good evening. It is truly an honor to be here tonight. What a long road it's been, almost two years. Looking back to when I first heard that the collector position was up in 18, and it was thought that the 32-year incumbent, my now opponent, may retire. I remember thinking that the unique skill set I have would fit perfectly into the job of collector. I attended Jeffco years ago, then went into the workforce. I went back to college, and I'm proud to say that I'm now in my last year of my undergrad school for business administration. I joined Mercy where I worked my way up for the last 18 years from customer service to payroll, HR, accounts payable and receivable, and finally management. I have written and implemented money handling policies for major St. Louis corporations. Be assured I have the skills and drive to not only manage the collector's office, but to save your tax dollars and provide better services. Like the ability to make installment payments on your taxes. Other counties do it. I will work to make it happen for you. I have to say though that it's my 18 years at Mercy that provided me with the real life practice and excellent training, their great culture and environment that fostered in me empathy, leadership skills, honesty, integrity, all the things that a public servant should aspire to. That's what made me who I am today. I can stand here and state confidently that I am ready to be your next county collector. I have fought against all odds to be before you tonight, and I'm privileged to do so. Everything I'm about to tell you, I've documented on my Lisa for Collector page. You can find more details there. You see, I'm just an average citizen who wanted to serve, to use what I do well to do good. I've never ran for office before, and it's been an eye opener. The establishment has done everything they could to stop me, but here I am. I was even forced to withdraw from the race once. The only mistake I made was trusting that all government website disclosed all of the requirements for the office, because they didn't. I was not informed of a bond affidavit that I needed until after I had filed. However, I was able to jump back in. The race opened up a month and a half later, affidavit in hand. So no matter how they try to spin that, they created a situation that I overcame. That gained me a hard-fought primary race through the summer, but here I am. And I've earned the right to stand here and tell you what my opponent doesn't want you to hear. That my opponent is a 32-year career politician you trusted with your vote eight times. And for that trust, she has repaid you by joining a lawsuit against you, the hardworking men of Jeffer and women of Jefferson County. It's estimated that the initial cost of this suit will be $1.2 million. When I heard about this suit, I was shocked. Who does that? When I watched her interview on Fox 2, you paid for it, and saw how glib she was to Elliot Davis, I'll admit, as a taxpayer, I was mad, and you should be too. The video can still be viewed on Fox 2, just Google, or just Google pay raise lawsuit and Beth Mann. Go watch it and see what you think. Elliot asked, how do taxpayers benefit from this? She replied, they don't. He then asked, so the only beneficiaries of this are the officials? Her reply was, yep. I find it obscene that my opponent would take a healthy paycheck from us, cash that check with no complaints for all these years, then on her way out the door, decide it wasn't enough. To sue the people who trusted you, who voted for you, I disagree with my opponent's choice to join this suit on principle. I have signed this pledge for you many months ago. This pledge states that I will never join the lawsuit against you, that she is a party to. The lawsuit that asks for a pay raise to be retroactive plus the cost of additional benefits, that the county, which is really you, the taxpaying citizens, will shell out over $1.2 million just to start with. 
Don't be fooled. She has shown us who she is. Voting for her for 32 years has become a habit. Just because you recognize her name, and it's time to break the habit. Break the habit by hiring me on election day, not only for my skills, but for who I am. Not only will I always watch over your bottom line, I will never betray your trust. I thank you for your time and ask that you tell your family and friends to break the bad habit. Break the bad habit and make the sensible choice. Vote Lisa Brewer short for collector on November 6th. After all, you pay the bills. Isn't it time for some change? Thank you. We are almost ready to close the evening. Not quite. We have one more race. But before we get to that, let me give you your last commercial of the evening and remind you that uh, this is the Candidates Forum put on by the Jefferson County Growth Association. And you're listening to it on KGF Radio and watching it on JCTV. And you can always catch uh, uh, rebroadcast of this on their various social media. Our sponsors tonight are Dobbs Tire and Auto, Govero Land Services, Enterprise Bank, Comtree, Firework City, and Lane Consolidated Services. Our last race tonight is the County Auditor, and we have one candidate with us tonight, Republican incumbent uh, Christy April. A resident of Hillsborough, Ms. April was appointed to serve the remainder of Richard Carter's term as County Auditor following his resignation in 2018. Prior to her appointment as Jefferson County Auditor, she worked in the Auditor's office for the past 19 years. Please welcome Christy April. He was worried about screwing up my name. I told him no big deal. <laughs> Just get it in the ballpark. We're good. <laughs> I pick on my husband and tell him his ancestors just stuttered coming across the border. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm taking a little different approach to this one. Um, I'm Christy, and I am the current county auditor after I was appointed in June. I have been in the office for over 19 years. I was the chief deputy auditor for almost 18 of those 19 years. Um, so I've been in there and I know just a little bit about what goes on in the office. Um, so what I want to kind of talk about here is my background, my education is all in accounting and auditing. I'm working on my master's in forensic accounting. Um, and so all of my work experience during those 19 years is all been in governmental accounting, which is a, a rare thing. In schooling, you might get about one credit hour of governmental accounting, and usually you're just sharing that with not-for-profit, so it's not even fully governmental accounting. Um, so you truly get this from a hands-on experience. Um, so I, I want to take this time and actually kind of throw out there what our office does. Um, most people don't know, because we're not really a public office. We, um, we hear a lot more from the internal side of the county. Um, so when I talk to people or they come up to me and ask, you know, hey, I kind of hate to ask, I'm a little embarrassed, I don't even know what the auditor does. You know, I just tell them, don't worry about it, because sometimes I don't think our own internal departments really know what we do. You know, they kind of don't want to see us coming, so I understand, it's no big deal. Um, so I just kind of want to run down th some of the things that we do in the county, um, and then, then kind of go over what some of the things that I want to kind of go forward with for the office. Um, one, a couple of the big jobs that our county or that our office works on is the budget. That's probably one of the biggest things in the county. Um, this past year, for 2018, we worked on and approved over almost an $83 million budget at the time that it was approved. And so that's a long process. For the auditor's office, the process actually starts in August and we start preparing the revenues and we work through with the departments and get them to pull in their numbers and get their wish list, as I'll call it. Um, I often think of like when being a kid and you get the Sears Christmas wish list and you kind of circle everything and tear out the pages and you hand it over to the parents and they all go, okay. And they set it aside and come back later and you find out you didn't get all that. Um, so that's kind of what I think this time of year is for me. Um, so we, we're going through all of that now and then we'll get together and work it over and talk with the accounting executive, director of administration and the electeds and we prepare it and balance it and present it to the council on November 1st. So this time of the year is pretty crazy for us. Um, but I love it, that's what I do. I live in this environment and uh, it actually makes me glad to get up and go to work every day. It's something different every single day. 
So this time of year, that's, that's kind of where I'm living. That's what I'm doing. But on top of all of that, we can't let the other duties of the office slide either. Um, so on a regular daily basis, we, are, we have the responsibility of reviewing all the financial activity of the office. So every department in the county that handles any type of financial activity, they have to present a monthly um, report to our office. And right now that's running about 40 different months, or 40 different reports for our office. Um, and right now, there's two of us in the office, myself and one other staff person, um, hoping to bump that up at least by one more here in another month or so. Um, but it's a lot of work, and the two of us combined, we only have four eyes. So a lot of hard work, a lot of long days, um, but we managed to get it done and we do that, and we do our due diligence. So we don't let things slide. Um, but. You know, there's, there's a lot that goes on, and so we try to educate our departments at the same time that we're checking all of this. We don't expect that everybody out there in the department has an accounting degree or has worked in bookkeeping or anything like that, so we educate as, long, as we go along. Um, so we monitor their activity um, with all their finances. The other thing on top of that is the county buys things. We buy dump trucks, we buy police cars, we buy desks, we buy all kinds of equipment. And by statute, we have to actually tag and monitor and track and physically see everything over $1,000 original cost. Um, we can't follow a depreciation schedule and say all these things have now rolled off the books because they've de fully depreciated out and they're worth nothing. Um, we have to go by original cost. So if 20 years ago something cost us $1,000 to buy, I'm still looking at it today. So we still have assets on the book from the 1970s, and I'm still checking them every year. And uh, so the guys will look at us out on the road and still say, we had that piece of equipment when I started in high school in the 70s. And I'll say, sorry, it's in the statutes, got to see it, <laughs> can't help it. So they'll kind of you know, bring it up from the shed, you know, and I'll just remind them, you could give it up to somebody. Um, but I ran over my time. So <laughs> I love my job. I would really appreciate your support in November. And if you want to find out more about me or our job in the office, come by and see me. <laughs> Well, that concludes our forum for tonight. I want to once again thank all the candidates for taking the time to be here tonight. We appreciate the time and effort you're putting forth in these races. We want to thank our sponsors who make this financially possible. I want to thank the Growth Association and the college for uh, putting all this together. And most of all, I want to thank our, our listening and viewing audience for taking the time and being an informed citizenry to make the right decision. And please remember, if you do nothing else, get out and vote on November 6th. We have our next forum next week. We'll concentrate on state and federal offices. Thank you for being here and have a great night.